This is an RTX 3050. No, wait, that's actually my Nan. But for the purposes of this demonstration, she will be called RTX 3050, the slowest card that Nvidia currently sells as she chugs along with her walker. Love you, Nan. And this is Usain Bolt, representing the RX 7900 XTX, the fastest AMD graphics card in the world. And clearly one of them is faster, right? I mean, like the 3050, my Nan will give it her best shot, but the Olympian could honestly fart faster than she can run. Don't worry, this analogy will make sense in a bit. But now consider that Usain Bolt was running on a broken treadmill, while my Nan got to explore the vast open world at seven miles a decade. Which one is faster now? Because I would argue, that's one point to Nan. Which brings us on to AMD versus Nvidia drivers. Let me explain. A lot of people will warn you against significantly faster AMD graphics cards because of broken drivers that will have them essentially running on a treadmill and going nowhere fast. The poor AMD driver sentiment is so bad that many people end up choosing something like the RTX 3070 Ti over the RX 6800 for rasterized gaming, a significantly faster and substantially cheaper graphics card from AMD. And that could make sense. It really isn't all about the speed if the consistency isn't there. It's more important that you can achieve the task than the speed of which you can achieve it. And this is where AMD tends to get a bad reputation. But the problem with this bad reputation is that if it's unjust or unfair, the person that's going to be most affected is you, the consumer. Put it this way, if AMD drivers are truly that bad, you should absolutely avoid them, especially for important work. But if this bad reputation is blown out of proportion and you don't have an application specific need for an Nvidia GPU, that 3070 Ti would cost you over $100 more while providing substantially less rasterization performance. Which brings us onto how we can best quantify AMD versus Nvidia driver issues. You could listen to your friends, the internet, or even tech YouTubers firsthand accounts. But the problem with that is it will always be secondhand information bias, memory, limited sample sets, all of these are things that we need to avoid to get an accurate result. Which is why I have stepped into the conversation. I've gone through AMD and Nvidia driver release notes, documenting and categorizing issues to get the most quantifiable information over the largest data set. Not only to make my Nan proud of me, but also so that we can as accurately as possible answer the question, are AMD drivers even that bad compared to Nvidia's? And stay tuned to the end, because not only do we achieve that task, but in doing this, we might have uncovered why AMD's poor sentiment is so prolific, because there are actually more issues with Nvidia cards, but maybe deeper issues for AMD. Let me explain. So I have a question. Are you an avid PC enthusiast stuck with that ugly ass Windows watermark ruining your gaming and streaming experience? Well, I have great news for you. WhoKeys is a software licensing website dedicated to getting you affordable keys. And the best part is you can get rid of that watermark in a matter of minutes. All you need to do is head down to the video description, click the sponsor link and enjoy an additional 25% off using my coupon code TL20. With PayPal checkout and quick key delivery, all you need to do is hit the Windows key, type activate and paste your key right here to become fully active. Activated. It really is that simple and that cheap. So head down to the video description if that sounds right for you. And thank you Hookies for sponsoring this video. So before we dive deep into the data, a couple quick notes to mention. Nvidia driver packages go as far back as July 2022. AMD's go further back than that, but we capped it there for a fair comparison. Additionally, modern GPU driver packages include updates for not only your specific graphics card and operating system, but also other models and OSs. As you can see here for AMD and here for Nvidia, we have updates for three generations of GPUs. So the first question that comes to mind is who has released the most amount of drivers? If one company has a significantly higher driver count than the other, that could very well indicate them needing to rush fix major issues. Or conversely, resolving issues could be quicker as updates are more frequent. And for AMD and Nvidia between this time frame, it is basically the same. AMD have released 10 drivers while Nvidia have released 11. But does that mean that Nvidia have had more issues to fix compared to AMD? Well, actually, yes, within the same time period. Nvidia have fixed 71 issues, while AMD have fixed 50. This demonstrates that there have been more total issues for owners of Nvidia cards, though that doesn't really tell the whole story. And it's worth remembering that there are a lot more use cases for Nvidia GPUs when you consider professional applications, due to Nvidia being the primary GPU of choice for most professional workloads. This adds to the total number of driver issues, and if you don't do anything other than game, that really won't be useful to helping you understand the AMD versus Nvidia driver issue. So what if we take those professional applications out 
and only include ones which are general use or gaming fixes. How does that number change? Well, that takes Nvidia's issues down from 71 to 51. But to be fair, we also need to do the same for AMD. And there are issues that do not include professional application specific fixes, so gaming and general use issues only, comes down to 46 from 50. Meaning that 90% of all AMD issues could affect gamers, while the number is about 70% for Nvidia. But still, more Nvidia driver issues, no matter which way you look at it. But just because Nvidia have issued the most amount of fixes, that doesn't mean that the problems have been as crippling for the end user's experience. I mean, for all that we know right now, they could entirely be text changes, while AMDs could significantly impact you and be detrimental to your experience, stopping you from gaming or working on an important task that you're intending to do. So what we need to do is categorize these bug fixes into their level of impact to the end user. So what I've done here is created a three tier hierarchy for high impact, medium impact, and low impact. And what I'm going to do is explain how I graded all of these bug fixes and categorize them into one of these levels. So for high impact, this is crashes, instability, corruption, or significantly reduced performance in the game or application. This must inhibit the user from performing their desired task or significantly reduce their performance. There is also no obvious workaround without impacting the user in another major way. So any driver issues that match that definition will become high impact. An example of this would be the Call of Duty Vanguard issue, where the game may randomly crash after extended gameplay. And the only obvious workaround to this is to play less, which is stopping the user from doing what they want, playing Call of Duty Vanguard, making it high impact. But what about medium? Medium is defined as issues that cause undesirable outcomes, but do not affect performance in a significant way, nor do they stop the user from performing the task or playing the game. This can include high impact issues, as long as they have a simple workaround that don't require the user to perform a reboot or won't significantly affect the user's intended experience. So a medium impact example would be this. Games utilizing DLSS 3 may crash when ending a recording using Shadowplay or OBS with MVAC. The reason that this is medium impact is that you can use another recording software or even another encoder, and it doesn't stop you from fundamentally completing your task. And then for low impact drivers, we have minor issues with little or inconsequential impact to the user, like if the G-Sync logo isn't being displayed on a menu. So let's see who has the most amount of high, medium, and low impact issues. Well, there's actually kind of two ways to look at this. From a totals perspective, Nvidia has the most number of low, medium, and high impact driver issues. But when we take out the professional application issues, Nvidia comes out on top for general use and gaming for high impact driver issues. Which brings us onto a really interesting observation, and one that gives us insight into why AMD drivers get such a bad reputation. Just take a look at this spread high impact, medium impact, and low impact. Issues with NVIDIA drivers are far more likely to have a user achievable resolution compared to AMD, which may contribute to the bad sentiment that AMD drivers get. Because even if it's not worse by total, the issues that you could face are far less likely to have a solution until the next driver release, which, if you remember correctly, will not come as early or as quickly as NVIDIA's, even if only by a little. But let's take a look into that a little bit more because that's going to be an extremely important component for a lot of people. If you have an issue, is it going to take a lot longer for one company to fix it over the other? And that brings us down to open issues, AMD versus Nvidia. And let's start with the longest open issues for both companies in our seven month timeline. Nvidia has had one persistent issue for the entire time. Toggling HDR on and off in-game causes game stability issues when non-native resolution is used. So if you're looking for a fix for that and you've been waiting for a long time, the only thing that I can do is feel sorry for you. But what about AMD? Surely they don't think seven months is appropriate, do they? Well, the good news is they don't, but six months is completely fine and it's more likely to affect people. GPU utilization may be stuck at 100% in Radeon performance metrics after closing games on some AMD graphics products, such as the Radeon 570. And let me know in the comments below who has been experiencing those issues. 
That is awful. But to be fair, they are the worst. So let's go back to quantifying this. Similarly, as we've seen before, AMD have had the least amount of cumulative open issues. And I say cumulative because we are counting each of these issues multiple times if they appear as open issues over multiple driver releases. I feel like that's the best way to handle some sort of punishment for not fixing open issues for something like over half a year. But going back to the poor AMD driver sentiment, if we break open issues down into low, medium, and high impact, NVIDIA do have the most amount of open issues across the board, even including high impact. But when you look at the data proportional, it shows that if you do come across an issue, it's more likely to be a high impact issue for AMD, meaning there isn't a simple workaround and you'll have to wait for a new driver release. Whereas NVIDIA's issues skew closer to the medium impact territory, where they're either not as detrimental to the end user's experience, or there's a reasonable solution the user can implement. So if you get an issue with AMD versus NVIDIA, one random issue, it's more likely that you're going to be able to resolve it yourself with NVIDIA versus AMD. And when you think about it like that, the whole sentiment about AMD drivers just being trash starts to make a bit more sense when people are having experiences like that. And you know, I often come up with a video concept and something I want to investigate, talk about and show you guys, something I hope you'll find interesting too. I likely have a general idea or a best guess based on my own experiences, but this is not what I thought at all. However, it does make a ton of sense. AMD drivers aren't that bad, completely true. Compared to NVIDIA, there's actually less issues, at least over the time period that we have data for. It is also worth mentioning that AMD drivers seem to get good optimizations over time, but you can clearly see why people have had bad experiences with AMD drivers compared to NVIDIA. However, we're not talking orders of magnitude worse in either direction, which is exactly why letting the data tell the story and drawing conclusions from it is the most valuable way to do this kind of comparison. And I'm confident that this is far more accurate and far more useful to the entire community than any single user experience. So it's now the time to consider AMD, given how much cheaper they tend to be. We'll check out the GPU value playlist for the most recent videos on the best graphics cards to buy, where we break down real world pricing and their relative performance to find you the best value option for your budget. And you can see those with other valuable videos mixed in by clicking here. Otherwise guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated and I hope you have an amazing day.